everyone. My name is Lisa. Welcome to Audubon at Home. This week we're studying marine creatures and that means animals that live in salt water. So we're going to take a look at some animals that are living in our tide pool exhibit here at the Audubon Nature Center and Aquarium. If we look over here we can see there's lots of animals in the tide pool. What do you see when you look in there? I'm really interested in these big star-shaped ones, these lovely sea stars. So I'm going to take one of those out. I like this big one right here. So I'm going to see if I can get this big guy out so that you can see them. Sometimes the sea stars really hold on. So I'm going to just give them a little shake to get them out. trying to be super gentle. If you go to a tide pool outside and you want to take a look at the sea stars that are there, just be gentle when you're taking the sea stars out of the tide pool because they have so many feet they're holding onto the rocks with and we don't want to hurt their feet. Sometimes if you give them a gentle shake, they'll stop holding onto the rock and then you can take them off of the rock and bring them out and take a good look at them. Remember, when we're done, we'll put them back in the salt water, too, because that's where they belong. Yay, sea star! Wow! Look at how big this one is. It's so big, it actually doesn't even fit in my hand. Now, let's see. Let's take a look at our sea star. How is our sea star like us, and how is it not? What do you see when you look at the sea star? Can you notice that it has bumps all over its skin? All those kind of bumps. Those bumps are kind of like its skeleton. And they're made of the same mineral that's in our bones to help give us structure and protect us. So that's what they do for the sea star too. I bet you also notice that it's got one, two, three, four, five arms we don't have that many arms, but those arms are really important because they help the sea star move and they help the sea star be able to grab its food. So we see that our sea star has those five arms, but those aren't actually its feet. Would you like to see its feet? I'm going to turn the sea star over very gently so you can see what its feet look like. So on the back side of our sea star, you can see its feet. Maybe you can spot these little feet that it's sticking up here. It has hundreds of feet because it really has to hold on to rocks when the, the tide is coming in and out. It doesn't want to get washed out into the water. So each one of these feet is like a little suction cup and it holds on with all of those feet. It also uses those feet to grab its food. Now we said before, what do we think a sea star eats? This sea star's favorite kind of food is a clam. So clams and mussels and oysters, all of those kinds of things. The clams that are often in the tide pools with them are things like a quahog or a soft shelled clam. And the sea star comes over to that clam and it takes these little feet and it wraps it around the clam. Okay, I'm going to turn our sea star back over to the other side. It doesn't like being upside down. And it grabs hold of that clam with all of those arms and it starts pulling the clam apart. Now, if you're a clam, the hard thing is that you have to use your muscles to keep your two shells together. And so here you are, you're trying to keep your muscles, your, your two shells together with those muscles, and you get really, really tired. In fact, the sea star doesn't usually get tired before the clam does, which is why the sea star is able to eat. Its little feet are powered by water, not by muscles. So it just takes the water that's in its body and it shoots it through these little tube feet and that helps it hold on to the clam so that the clam gets tired. 
The other cool thing about the sea star, and I bet you know this because you've probably heard about sea stars before, is they don't need to open up the clam completely. All they need is a little tiny, tiny bit open. And when they get a little tiny bit of the clam open, they take their stomach, which is right underneath their mouth. Their mouth is right there in the middle. It doesn't have its mouth open right now, so you can't see that. But when sea stars are feeding, their stomach is sticking out through their mouth. They stick out their stomach into the clam, they digest the clam, and they re-swallow their stomach. Don't try that at home. That would be gross. But that's how sea stars eat, and that's what makes them so successful. I'm gonna turn the sea star over one more time because people always ask about this little orange dot. That little orange dot, some people think, is an eyeball. It's actually not an eyeball. It's actually like a drain in your sink. It opens and closes, and it allows water to get into the body of the sea star. Now we have water in our body too, but the water doesn't come in through our skin or through anything like that. The water comes in from us drinking water and liquids and from our food. The sea star actually sucks water in through that little hole right there, that little orange dot. That's called a magiporite, but you don't have to remember that. Once the water is in the sea star's body, it moves in and out of all the tubes that are going up and down its arms, and that's what powers those wonderful feet that a sea star has. That's why if a sea star is out of the water too long, it stops being able to move, and it can't get itself back into the water. So if you see a sea star up on the beach, and it looks like it's not near the water, it's nice to help that sea star get back into the water very gently. So our sea star has eaten its clam, its digested all the inside of the clam. That's the part that we eat in the clam too. And it three swallows its stomach and it's very happy. Sea stars don't eat as often as we do. We have to eat three times a day. Probably a sea star would eat a clam meal like that not once, maybe twice in, in a week or two. It doesn't even need as much food as we do because there's a lot to that clam. So it spends a lot of time digesting that clam. Maybe three times a week even especially in certain times of the year if it needs a lot of energy. Now you might notice the sea star's arms are getting kind of floppy here. That's because it's out of the water. And like I was saying before, when it loses water in its body, it stops being able to move. So I'm gonna put it back in just a minute. But I wanna do one more thing. We said that some people think this is an eyeball, but it's not an eyeball. Sea stars have eyes, they just aren't like ours. Their eyes are little eye spots and there's five of them. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there, and there's one there on the ends of its arms. Can you imagine if we had eye spots on the ends of our fingers? That would be pretty funny. And it allows the sea star to see where the dark is and where the light is. So it will know where the top of the water and where the bottom of the water is. Well, thank you for learning about sea stars with us. I'm gonna put our friend the sea star back into the tide pool so that it can get the water back in its body like it needs to. And thanks again for joining us at Audubon at Home. This is Lisa signing off by the tide pool. Have a good day.